In 2003, a local failure in South Canada propagated to become one of the largest blackouts in history. This illustrates the potential vulnerability of our critical infrastructure, but more broadly, it shows how difficult and often how unexpected are network failures. You have hundreds of local disturbances that seem to do nothing, but then one unlucky occurrence leads to a major breakdown. To understand this, let us begin with a simple description of resilience. Think about maybe an ecological or a biological system. We characterize it by its activity, X of T. This X of T can represent, for example, the level of biodiversity in an ecosystem or the growth rate of a cell. Then we track this activity through a differential equation. Now, let's unpack this. The function f describes the physics of the system. It is intrinsic to the inner mechanisms that drive it. So you cannot change this function. To change f, you will need to fundamentally change the behavior of your system. On the other hand, the parameter beta is a tunable parameter. For example, if you increase the temperature, or change the ocean acidity, or just add or deplete nutrients from your cell, all of those disturbances or stress factors, they are all perturbations to beta. Now, as you change beta, the state of the system responds and changes accordingly. Sometimes the change is gradual, but if you stretch beta too much, you observe a dramatic collapse. It is these critical points where the system suddenly changes its behavior that we want to be able to predict. But what happens when we advance from this simple one-dimensional model into a complex network? Let's see an example. Here is a model for a symbiotic ecosystem of plants and pollinators. Yeah, I know, it looks rough, but before you start checking your emails, bear with me for a moment. What we did is we started to stress the system. For example, we removed a few plants or pollinators, or maybe just changed their interaction strengths. We wanted to observe the tipping points where the system could no longer sustain our disruptions. Problem is, there's no clear transition point. We examined many networks, and it's an entire zoo. Some systems are very vulnerable, others can withstand more than 90% extinctions before they collapse. Where is the tipping point here? A 30, 50, or maybe 95%? This lack of predictability is rooted in the multidimensionality of complex networks. It's not just a simple resilience function with a single parameter beta. These systems can be perturbed in many different directions, each leading to a different outcome. So how do we reduce this dimensionality? Averaging seems to be the most natural choice, but for real networks, it is way too naive. In a scale-free environment, the average simply does not represent the system. Each node or link are unique. So what is the natural symmetry of these networks? Well, the nodes are diverse. We have hubs together with peripheral nodes, but their environments are much more homogeneous. For example, maybe I have two friends and you have a hundred friends. So me and you, we are completely different. But my two friends and your hundred friends are both extracted from the same statistical pool. Our neighborhoods may be of different size, but they are statistically similar. With this in mind, what we need is to map the behavior of the average neighborhood. The idea is that the only information that a node has about the state of the network, for example, that there was a failure or extinction somewhere in the system, all of this information is mediated to the node by its direct neighborhood. So this is the natural control parameter of resilience. It is the effective beta parameter of our system. Whether you remove a node, change a link weight, or make any other perturbation to your network, what matters is how this disturbance changes the effective parameter beta. Let's go back to our ecosystem. Its one-dimensional resilience function has a single critical transition. What our theory predicts is that all the mess we have observed earlier is simply because we were looking at the wrong parameter. If we map all our perturbations to beta space, they all collapse into one predictable tipping point. So behind that diversity, the zoo of resilience patterns that we observed earlier, we clearly see that there is a hidden universality. Whether it's ecosystems, cellular dynamics, or power grids, beta effective offers the natural control parameter to predict the universal resilience patterns in complex network dynamics.